And we also learn uh, Ka'ab uh, radiallahu anhu, uh, he mentioned something to the effect of that when a person disobeys his parents, then his life term is reduced. And he, uh, literally, his life term is reduced. Uh, uh, we also learn uh, that when a person, uh, some salaf would say that the person who is disobedient to his parents will find his children to be disobedient. And he, this is a, a, a sin for which you see the consequences in this life. There is punishment in the grave for such behavior. Uh, we also learn that such a person who is disobedient to his parents, and he constantly disobedient, uh, will not enter paradise. Now, of the rights of the parents is that you serve them, that you obey them, you don't disobey them. As long as they're telling you to do something that is permissible, you obey them. And part of the rights of the parents is that you uh, serve them in such a way that they become happy and that they make dua for you. Because we learn that, uh, that of the duas that are uh, accepted, is the dua of the walid for his walad, the dua of the father for his child. And walid can also be understood as the one who gives birth, meaning the parent for his child. So the dua that parents make for their children, that is accepted. So make them happy. Make them happy. Serve them. Do different things for them so that they make dua for you. Because as long as they're alive, you have this privilege that they will make dua for you. Once they leave the world, you, you are going to miss, you know, you, you're going to lose something very, very precious. We, uh, uh, you know, part of uh, treating parents well is that you do not make them cry. In a hadith, we learn about how a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said that I made, uh, uh, you know, I'm making hijrah and I left my parents crying. He said, go back to them and make them laugh as you made them weep. Go back. You think you, you have done something huge by making the hijrah? Uh, at the at the cost of making your parents cry, return and make them happy first. And another important thing is that if parents ever make a mistake, then do not embarrass them. Do not embarrass them. Do not, uh, you know, uh, be harsh to them. Overlook, forgive, uh, spend on your parents. And when you have to spend, uh, uh, you know, in 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 ways to earn Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's approval. Begin with your mother, uh, because the Prophet وسلم, said while standing on the mimba that the hand which gives uh, uh, is the upper hand, right? Yadul uh, murti al and what what this also means is that the that the upper hand is higher, meaning it's it's better than the lower hand. And he said that um, uh, start with those for whom you are responsible. Meaning when you have to spend, begin spending on those whom you are responsible for. And then he said, Ummaka, wa abaka, wa uhtaka, wa akhaka, thumma adnaka, adnaka. Begin with your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, then the next closest and the next closest. And of course, the wife and children are not mentioned over here because that is not applicable to everyone. Uh, those uh, who are married, uh, those men, uh, you know, who are responsible uh, in, the, in that way, then of course, wife and children are understood. But the Prophet وسلم, over here, he was addressing everyone. So this is relevant to everyone. Spend on your mother, spend on your father, spend on your siblings. And uh, work hard to earn money and use that for your parents. Muhammad ibn Sirin, we learned that he would buy the softest clothes for his mother. And he wouldn't just buy any clothes, he would buy the softest clothes for his mother. And on Eid, he would color her clothes himself and he would never raise his voice at her louder than hers. And he would never speak to her in a volume that was louder than hers. Allahu Akbar. We learn that when Rubay bin Khutaym, when he would remove something harmful from the road, he would say, oh Allah, reward my mother and father for this also. And he look, look at his eagerness. Ya Allah, reward my mother and father also. Because they, they raised me, they taught me to do all these good things. So when I'm doing anything, reward them also. We learn uh, that when parents uh, have departed from the world, then we should especially make dua for them because it benefits them. We should seek forgiveness for them. 
we should give sadaqa on their behalf, uh, especially the sadaqa of giving water to people. Uh, we should um, uh, even do voluntary good deeds on their behalf. Like, for example, you can do hajj on their behalf. Uh, you can fulfill their vows. Uh, and you should be good to their friends and their relatives. You will be rewarded for that. Uh, and, and they will also be, uh, uh, you know, rewarded for the good that you do, uh, insha'Allah. Now, of the du'as that we can make for our parents, of course, is first of all, رَبِّرْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Oh my Lord, have mercy upon them as they brought me up when I was small. I was small, I was incapable, I was in need of protection, of mercy, of love, affection, constant round-the-clock care and they gave that to me i can never do the same for my parents so ya allah you give them what i am not able to give them sometimes you are in a situation where you are not able to help your parents maybe your your physical health is such or you live in a different country you live too far away you're not able to do anything for them so especially make dua give sadaqa on their behalf send them financial gifts you know, so that their life is easy, but especially make dua for them. Rabbirhamhuma kama rabbayani sagira, and make this dua regularly, every day, like one of the scholars mentioned, after every salah.